All right guys, so now what I wanna do is I'm gonna show you guys how to create a table with different sections or different groups. So we'll actually put this other tuple to use. So this table will have a people section at the top and that one will have three rows and it will have another video section at the bottom and that will have five rows and I'm gonna demonstrate a lot of other things. So, well, let's go ahead and get started. So if you hop back into your storyboard and open up your right panel, all right so make sure you have your table view selected which resembles pretty much the table and open your attributes inspector which is this little slider looking thing and right now you're looking for a property called style and by default it's plain what we want to do is grouped so plain you use that whenever you have one set of information grouped whenever you want your table to have sections or groups that's what we do so now this table right here is capable of displaying um, different piece of information in sections or categories. That's uh, probably a pretty good word for it. So now over in the brains, here's what we're gonna do. The first thing we have to say is, okay, well, this table doesn't just have one section anymore. It actually has two. So we're gonna change this to two. Again, it's gonna have a section for people and one for videos. So after this, Remember right here, it's saying how many rows are in this little section. Well, by default, whenever we had one, we can just count however many items were in the tuple. But right now, this is actually going to change because for people, it has three, but for videos, it has five. So how do we kind of handle that? Well, what we want to do is we actually want to test what section we're looking at or what section we're currently creating. So the first section that we're gonna create is for people. So in order to test that, we can just say if section equals equals zero, because this section right here, whenever it's creating our table, it's information that it passes along to us saying what group you're currently creating. Well, of course, computers start counting at zero. So whenever we create that first group, that's what we're testing at right here. So how many rows are in my first group? Well, however many rows are in people. So we can just paste that in right there. Now what we can do is we can just call else. So it says, okay, whenever I'm creating that people section, this is how many rows. Else, if you're creating the other section, which is videos, and you want the number of rows, well, just go ahead and count the number of items in the videos tuple. So pretty easy right there. Actually, let me go ahead and probably be easier to see if I add some spacing right there. So now what we need to do is whenever we're displaying the contents and all right, so the contents right here, and let me actually, I can keep that, whatever. So by default, I mean before, whenever we displayed the contents, we just said, okay, just use this people tuple because that's all we were doing for that simple demonstration. But now the contents it displays for each section is dependent on what section we're creating. So we actually use this index path. This index path, it's kind of a dumb variable name. Just think of this as row number. So the first three rows, are going to be people and the last five are going to be videos now what we need to do is for each row we need to test what section it's a part of so under this cell because remember we always want to create a blank table cell and we always want to return it at the end but in the middle is where we say what contents we want to use so to test this we just say okay if index path and there's a property on this called section so it's pretty much saying if this row belongs to the section zero, it must mean that this row is part of the people group. So that's a really simple test. And then we can say else, else if this row is not part of the people group, well then it must be part of the video group. So I know it's kind of weird to look at sections and whatever like that, but simple enough. So now if it's part of the people group, we can just do this. Extract the person's name 
and then return that name for the label. And actually, let me just go ahead and create a new line right here. Else, if we're making a table cell for the video group, then what we can do is we can extract the video title and what am I gonna name? It's like video description. And of course, take videos index path dot row. And actually we can just copy this. And instead of returning person's name, we can just return something like video title and tighten this up. So again, we already know what all this does. Now, whenever it's creating the content for an individual cell, the first thing it does is say, okay, what section am I a part of? Am I supposed to be for the people or the videos? If I'm in the people section, then extract the information from that tuple and just print out their name, else print out the video title. So if we run this, we can see what's going on. All right, pretty sweet. So it created two different sections. How big did it create them? Well, it's based on the size of the tuple and what are the contents of each cell? Well, it depends what section you're at and also the positioning as well. So pretty, I say, you know what? I say pretty stinking sweet a lot and it's uh, kind of annoying. I never say that in real life, just like for my videos, which is uh, kind of stupid now that I think about it. But I wanna show you guys one other cool thing while I have some time left. So if the user's just looking at this, it'll, they're like, okay. So I see a bunch of names and then I see a bunch of like programming categories. What the heck am I looking at? It's always useful to give them a nice little title above each video section. So I'll show you guys the method to do that. And uh, let me just say like, give each um, table section a title. All right, so if you go to table view and you return string, then what you can do, well, let me make sure I got the right one. You know, table view, all right, yep. So you wanna look for this title for header in section. And what this does again is it just adds a little bit of text above that little table section. And it's just a little indicator of the contents of the table. And this is actually really easy. So I'm just gonna copy this. So again, we get passed in the section, which pretty much means what group are you working with? Well, for the first little category right there, we just wanna return the title of people. And that says, okay, for the first section, the title of this is people. And if it's not the people category, then we just wanna return the title of videos. And this is what that does. It's probably easier if you just see it. So what it does is it takes is it takes whatever string you return and it capitalizes it all and it sets it as the title for that section. So now, again, I, I really don't know what this app would be useful for, having people and videos on the same screen. Um, I don't know, maybe you're like you're saving a list of your favorite things, people and videos, who knows, but now the user can easily see which each different category is used for. So, <coughs> wow, I took a deep breath and now I sound like I'm smoking. So there you go. Hopefully you guys aren't, you know, incredibly overwhelmed. If you are, then again, all of this code is going to be on my forum. I'm going to copy it and paste it on there right now. So you can go copy it. And also if you're having any bugs or if you're wondering how to do anything else with tables, go to my forum, ask me on there. I will be glad to answer it for you. So uh, yeah, thank you guys for watching and I will see you guys next time.